Here we are at Michigan for the running of the 2000 IROC Series race number two, the Michigan 100. On the pole for today's race, Justin Rainson to the outside is Greg Lee. Then you got Dale Salzman, Jeff Gambit, Josh Anderson, Dan Bandon, Jonathan King, Kyle Perry, Larry Bouchard Jr., Tim Randolph, Cynthia Bright, and Rachel Seep rounding out the field. Set your 12 car field for 13 laps at Michigan. Now, something interesting to note. Three of the four races that we've had so far at Michigan have been decided by the last lap pass. In fact, it was the last three, the 1997, 1998, and 1999 series. Will this race be just like the others? Who knows? The stats are showing that. If you're in first on the last lap, you're going get, to get passed. So here we go. Pace car into pit road. 13 laps at Michigan. To decide the winner of the Michigan 100, we could even set a new points there after today. As the green flag is in the air, we're racing at Michigan. Justin Rain's got a big jump on the field as they come down the back straight, but that big jump might hurt him because here comes Jeff Gambit with a big push. Down to the bottom lane he goes. Gambit trying to clear, but Dan Bandon is coming in the four car. Coming off turn four, this is probably Bandon's best track. He's won here so many times, and he's going to try and get back to the line first. No, Jeff Gambit does another three wide. Kyle Perry trying to come to the bottom lane. They are tight as they enter turn one. Four wide for the race lead. How do you like that? Wow, close there. That could be a wreck with the car up against the wall, and it is going to be. Around they go. Big wreck on the back straightaway. Yellow's out. A big wreck into the inside wall. It's Dale Salzman, Josh Anderson, Jeff Gambit involved. Rachel Steep was the one that made it four wide, and will get back to the line first as they come off of turn number four. And a big hit on the back straightaway inside wall for a few drivers. Rachel Seep does lead us back. We got problems on the back straight. Jeff Gant was the first one to go around. Looks like he has minimal damage. Let's see what happened. Rachel Seat made it four wide, and they just continue to go four wide. Tim ran off down the bottom lane, but Jeff Gant with the one all the way up against the wall nails it. Comes down, I believe that might be the nine of Dale Salzman. It is. Jeff Gant does spin just a little bit, but he's able to continue on after that. The part I'm worried about is up here, Larry Bouchard Jr., Josh Anderson, and Dale Salzman. Right here, look at this nine car. Oh, oh, hard hit on the rear end. That is a tough, tough collision right there. And that could put him out of the race, although it's rear end damage. I don't know if that would put him out of the race. He tried to save it. Josh Anderson was there. Larry Bouchard Jr. tipped the nine, sent them hard into the inside wall, spinning wildly. As he came back up the track, he is able to continue on, so we'll be able to see if he stays in the race. Rachel Seep, however, leads us back to the line. They'll stay out, and it'll be a restart with under 10 laps to go at Michigan. They're on the back straight right, coming to set the green flag on lap number 7. And no cars retired from that, but we have some cars with some heavy damage. Rachel Seep is out front. Tim Randolph right behind her in second. Then you got Kyle Perry in third. Greg Lee fourth. Cynthia Bright in fifth. Dan Bannon, 6th, 7th, Jonathan King, Justin Reigns in 8th, Larry Bouchard Jr. in 9th, 10th is Jeff Gambit, then Dale Salzman in 11th, and 12th is Josh Anderson. Salzman is the one with the most damage. We'll probably be down on power as he hit the wall hard with his rear end. Rachel Seat trying to win here at Michigan, but still has a long ways to go, not even halfway through the race. If we have another caution, it will be a late race restart, but if we go a little bit into the turn and a caution comes up, the race will most likely be over, so just remember that. Pace car into pit road. First restart of the day, lap number seven. Rachel Seep is your race leader. Tim Randolph behind her as they come down the front straightaway. Green flag back in the air, back race, and look at Seep with that great jump there on Tim Randolph. In fact, Kyle Perry does go to the outside. They're three wide back there trying to get around some cars. See how slow Salzman is already. And if Randolph has Greg Lee stay with him, it'll work out. And if Lee pushes Randolph, they're going to get a big run down this back straightaway to watch the run they're going to get as they come down the back stretch. Coming up to speed already a lot faster than Seep. 
and with Lee pushing Randolph, that's going to get them up onto the back bumper of that 11 car. But does Lee make a move right here off of turn number four? He can't, and that's really going to... Look at the speed that they have coming down the front straight away. They are absolutely going to be there in one and two. Big run. About two miles an hour faster into the corner. Lee does make a move on Randolph, though, and that could help see keep the lead for just a lap more. Come to five to go this time. You can see how off pace Josh Anderson is and Dale Salzman is even farther back. And with them going three wide, that's going to really help seep out. However, Lee able to keep clear down to the stripe. Just five laps of racing to go at Michigan. Greg Lee is trying to run down Rachel Seep. Dan Bannon is coming in the four car. And Seep right now has been run faster than Lee. Bannon looking to the bottom lane. Has enough of a run. And Rachel Seep is loving this. Jonathan King pushing Bannon through. The last time we had a race like this was the 1996 Iraq race. Where Rick Stevenson, the 11, got out front and was not touched. Now the 11 car back out front. Rachel Seep hasn't been touched since the restart. Exactly what happened in the 1996 season. Deja vu. Four to go. Can anyone run down that 11 car? Dan Bannon has gotten clear. We were talking about how this is probably his best track in, over in these series. He's won here many times. He's finished in the top five here many times. Broke a winless streak here. His place and he just matched. They are friends. Can he get an IROC race win today? It would be his first. He's got to run. Cynthia Bright is coming in the three. Tim Randolph three wide to the bottom. Almost some contact there. There might have been some contact. Who's that in the middle? That's Justin Reigns through the middle. Dan Bannon is catching. He just has three laps though to try and get by that 11 car. Not much time left. Cynthia Bryce holds the guy in clear. Bright can get up to the back of the four and help. Hi, right, it's gonna be close. Down the back straight away. Still no help. They are getting just a little bit closer. Last lap. They were just a little bit faster. Tim Randolph trying to get clear and help the other the other uh, two out. Off of turn number four. Two to go this time. Bandon still trying to close in. Two to go. Laps are getting identical now. But look at Cynthia Bright going to try and get up there and help Dan Bandon. And also Tim Randolph is coming. But Bright might go to the bottom here. If she gets inside that four car, which she can't. It's going to be close here. White flag this time for Rachel Seep. Dale Salzman, though, is really slow ahead. Will that play a factor in this race? Off of turn four, they balance side by side for a second behind. Three wide for a second. At the white flag, it's Rachel Seep out front, but they're three wide for a second behind. Final lap at Michigan. Who gets back in front? Rachel Seep has a dominating lead as they come down the back straight away. Salzman is ahead, but I don't think he'll play a factor quite yet. Into three and four, they will come. Rachel Seep has a dominating lead over Cynthia Bright and the others behind Ballon for second. Through three and four she comes. Off of turn number four. Lap car will not play a factor. Rachel Seep will dominate the Michigan 100 for the 2000 IROC series and win. Dominating performance by that 11 team. Rachel Seep gets it done with a win. Wow. Just like, as I said, the 1996 IROC season. 11 car got out front on a restart. Was not caught. And that breaks the string of last lap pass we had. We had three in a row there. But Rachel Seep dominates at Michigan to break that string. Waiting for Salzman to cross the line to, so that we could see the official results. Here he comes in that damaged number nine car. There's one more lap. He would have played a factor in that race. But Seep does get it done. If you look at the point standings, Rachel Seep wins the race. Tim Randolph in second, third, Cynthia Bright, Greg Lee in fourth, Kyle Perry fifth. Justin Reigns ends up sixth. Jonathan King seventh, Dan Ban eighth, Jeff Gambit ninth, Larry Shark Jr. tenth. Josh Anderson got some damage. He hit the inside wall on that wreck. He finished eleventh. Dale Salzman nailed the outs or the inside wall on that wreck. He finishes twelfth and way off the pace, almost a lap behind. How about two of the top three are women?
Rachel Seep wins, Cynthia Bright third. It's awesome to see. Congratulations to Rachel, Rachel Seep on winning the 2000 IRAC Series Michigan 100. As we look at the point standings, Greg Lee has the points lead. Rachel Seep in second. They got Jeff Gambit, Justin Raines, Kyle Perry, Jonathan King, Cynthia Bright, Tim Randolph, Larry Bouchard Jr., Dale Salzman, Dan Bannon, and Josh Anderson. So those are your points. And only one driver has finished top five in both races. That's Greg Lee, your Daytona winner. He keeps the points lead after finishing very well here at Michigan. He has a 17-point lead over Rachel Seep. And Seep dominated that race. 13 laps led, not in the race, but 13 laps led the season. Basically led most of, the, of this Michigan race. As the next race will be the Watkins Glen 100 at Watkins Glen, but we have the 2001 Iraq Series race coming up from Michigan. See you guys then.